Movies I've always had a fascination with are those large casts surrounding a singular mystery that involves them all. It's like watching someone's newly created machine operating in front of you, and either it's well-crafted and runs smoothly, or it blows up in your face like a jammed blunderbuss. Bonus points if you can make it funny, but it doesn't need to be like earlier this year with Death on the Nile, an alright little film that needed a little more refinement. But not all settle for doing just an alright job. Some want to do more and add some fitting comedy and action, and Bullet Train is one of those movies. Taking place in Tokyo, there is a large cast of characters in which Ladybug, Lemon and Tangerine, The Father, The Prince, The Wolf, and The Hornet are all kinds of private contractors. Snatch and Grabber, Mob Members, Mob Enforcers, Assassins, and The Rail Tracer! Okay, scratch that last one. They all cross paths with each other when whether by contract or personal vendetta on a titular bullet train, and as the train approaches its final stop, the mystery behind why they are all there unravels. Believe me, I know, it was a little bit of characters and setup to go through, and even after having read it out loud, even hamster my step a wheel missed. It was necessary, however, and the movie doesn't explain the same information in as short a time frame, so you'll be able to digest it all easily as the film progresses. I don't want to say this movie is necessarily an anime, but that's the first thing that comes to mind when describing it. First off, there is no need to play who's the protagonist, considering most of the characters here are foreign to Japan, thus tower over everyone else on the train like Brock Lesnar wrestling midgets. But that is how it comes off. Everyone is almost a caricature, especially the wolf. Like, towards the end of his backstory, he gasps in Spanish like it's a soap opera. The action is pretty neat, too. Very Jackie Chan-esque, with a number of people bending objects around them like angry does the elements. And despite his age, though I'm sure he had a stunt double, it was neat to see Brad Pitt is still willing to get thrown around like a Chinese stuntman. Much of it also hits the right balance of action and comedy, especially with Ladybug's little quirk that he's just trying to figure himself out and is currently on a spiritual journey of sorts, about whatever energy you put out is whatever you get back. So his little hippy-dippy laid-back perspective mixes well with high-strung short-temperedness of others like Tangerine, making for some fun fights and interactions. There are a few issues I take away from it all, though, and one is how everyone else on the train pretty much just ignores what is happening around them. For example, there is a fight between Ladybug and Lemon in a quiet car, and only one person raises a fuss about it. I know the Japanese do not like to engage with people unless absolutely necessary, my kind of folks, but as the movie progresses, more and more characters get more and more fucked up with injuries popping up like that rash you got from a one-night stand, and more characters are introduced almost until the ending of the film. Why is it that we're still doing that with backstories included. This bloats the film like Into the Spider-Verse with all the different Spider-Men requiring a variation of the same. Fucking how did we get here set up? Also, there is an awful lot of fast talking with little time to digest. Much of the dialogue is rapid fire like Yahtzee was a 1930s gangster, and especially when Lemon and Tangerine are bickering like a couple in therapy. I don't really have an issue with fast talking, but even I slowed down a bit because people had asked in the past. Also, everyone survives the ludicrous ending. This isn't to say the writing isn't solid, or that some of the character backstories aren't decently handled along the way most of the time, but some refinement is needed. I'm also not a big fan of the breakdown of the plan of these kinds of films. The mystery is the cake, and anything additional is frosting, and I wouldn't appreciate trying to eat said cake while also being lectured on every little detail of its making. Just let me enjoy the cake. I can taste what's in it, so it's not hard to figure out what went into it. Now, regardless of these complaints, at one point I mostly stopped just taking notes because I was thoroughly entertained by the experience of this film, and it's definitely better than most of the crap that's been out there recently, like the over Overrated? Nope. Yes, it's extremely overrated. In fact, click the link above to hear what I have to say about it. And please, subscribe to join my kingdom.